Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for reaching the home stretch but of course after what was a pretty slow weekend college football wise I uh, didn't think that we necessarily needed to lead with college football I didn't think there was like an A++ story top five upset that required us to jump right into college football so we'll start here with college football uh, next episode next couple episodes we'll get back into college football all that stuff but let's talk college football right now and let's talk about what I believe was the biggest story of the weekend and unfortunately as has been way too often the case the biggest story came off the field and it wasn't to do with a game and it wasn't to do with a result but instead it happened at Ohio State where they had a bunch of positive tests and on Friday they announced about 10 p.m. Eastern time and I know it was about 10 p.m. Eastern because I was on radio on Fox Sports Radio uh, they announced about 10 p.m. Eastern time that the Ohio State game against Illinois was canceled and in the small picture I don't think it's a huge deal because games are being canceled left and right. Players are safe. They're under good medical supervision. I've talked about all that stuff. But in the big picture, it's actually a huge deal because now it puts into play so many different variables when it comes to the Big Ten, including their ability to get a team into the college football playoff and, frankly, to even get Ohio State into the Big Ten championship game. And so let me explain why and let me get into all the details uh, but it really starts with what I said just a second ago. Um, Friday afternoon, we find out that it starts with Ryan Day, the head coach. He tests positive. He will not be with the team. He will not be traveling. He will not be participating in Saturday's game. But as of about 4 or 5 o'clock Friday afternoon, the plan was for Ohio State uh, to still play Illinois and to still get the game in. They do an additional round of tests, and before they can get on the plane, the school decides that they are going to cancel the game. Um, but why this is so important is for one very simple reason, and frankly, for something that I don't think anybody really took into account when the Big Ten football season started, and that was this. This is Ohio State's second canceled game of the season. And remember, in the Big Ten, games are not postponed like they are in the SEC, ACC, or Big 12. Games are canceled. Uh, the Big Ten did not build bye weeks into the schedule, and so if you cannot get in the game on a Friday or a Saturday, that game is just off the schedule. So this is the second time that it has happened for Ohio State. A few weeks ago, they were supposed to play Maryland. Maryland had a bunch of positive tests. That game gets canceled. No makeup date because there are no dates left to make it up. Um, and then on Saturday, the Illinois game gets canceled as well, which means that even in a best case scenario, Ohio State is down to six regular season games. Uh, and if they miss any of the last two games, which are against Michigan State next weekend and then Michigan the following weekend, uh, they don't qualify for the Big Ten championship game. So the Big Ten, when they decided to come back, put in this obscure rule that, as I said a minute ago, I don't think anybody thought would be into consideration at all. But the Big Ten put in a rule that you needed a minimum of six regular season games to qualify for the Big Ten championship game. Well, Ohio State's played four, and they've already missed two. That's six right there, and they have two left, which means that if they miss one of their next two games – Ohio State will not qualify for the Big Ten Championship game. They can be undefeated. They can beat everybody on their schedule. They could be very clearly the best team in the conference, which I don't know that they are, but they're certainly the best team record-wise right now. They're the only undefeated team in the conference. But if they do not get to six regular season games, they do not qualify for the Big Ten Championship game. And so it's idiotic, and it's stupid, and it has caused all sorts of chaos, and I do think that in the bigger picture, it is just a further just stamp, right? Like, take one of those stamps and just stamp a piece of paper. This is just further proof that the Big Ten leadership has completely failed everyone in this conference, everyone in this league, everyone affiliated with this league, um, and it's just, it's really, if anything been a masterclass in how to fail your schools, your coaches, your players from the beginning. If you literally made every wrong decision from August on, you couldn't do better than the, if you were trying to make every wrong decision from August until now, you could literally not do better than what the Big Ten has done. 
it goes back to what I talked about in July. It goes back to what I talked about in August. First of all, they should have never canceled the season altogether when they did. If you guys listen to this show, and I know most of you are diehard, consistent listeners, you know that from the beginning, I never once said that the Big Ten was wrong for canceling the season. What I said was the Big Ten was wrong for canceling the season when they did and under the circumstances that they did. It wasn't necessary. You didn't need to go so quickly. You didn't need to make so many quick decisions. Instead, it was the exact opposite. What they needed to do is follow the guidance of the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12 and say, we're not promising that we're going to get a season, but we're not going to cancel it five weeks before the season is supposed to start anyway. It never made sense at the time. It never made sense in the moment. There were plenty of ways to push back the season, to delay the season, to do what the SEC did and not play until September 26th. There was no reason for the Big Ten to cancel when they did. That was mistake number one. Then mistake number two was waiting forever once you decide to come back, waiting as long as they did to actually get games on the field. I told you back in September, it's still applicable now. Never forget that even when the season was canceled, among the dumbest rules that were in place when the season was canceled or postponed was that the players were still allowed to practice every single day. They were still allowed, excuse me, to be in the weight room every single day. And so when the players were practicing and the players were in the weight room, one, it was just dumb that they couldn't play on Saturdays. But two, once you decide to make the se- decide the season's coming back, it's not as though the players have been in their dorms, on their couch, eating Cheetos and playing Halo. They've been in the facility working out. They've been on the practice field. So once you make the decision to come back, it doesn't take a month to get games on the field. They waited until October 24th to actually play games when all these teams had already been practicing, had already been preparing. They easily could have gotten games back on the field a couple weeks earlier. But by waiting until October 24th, it gave themselves absolutely no wiggle room in case a game was canceled, in case a game was postponed, in case there were positive tests and a game couldn't be played on any given Saturday. Again, the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12, they have weeks built into the schedule where if something went wrong, well, We just won't play this week, we'll play next week. Or we won't play this week, we'll play December 5th. We'll play December 12th. We will get these games in as best as we can, but the Big Ten put themselves in a zero-win proposition by deciding that we're going to wait as long as we can to come back and give ourselves zero wiggle room when we decide to do it. And then finally, they made this idiotic decision that they were going to put a minimum number of games on a team to qualify for the Big Ten Championship game, which is six, which is where Wisconsin is essentially at that breaking point right now. Wisconsin is not in position to get in, and Ohio State is definitely at that breaking point where if they if they don't get in one of the next two games, if they don't get in both of them, they do not qualify for the Big Ten Championship game. And so again, it's been a masterclass in stupidity from the Big Ten Um, And I think, by the way, the biggest mistake, which nobody it feels like nobody is criticizing them for except for me. They had this idea that if they test every day, we'll never have to cancel a game, which just at its most basic level doesn't make sense. Right. First of all, I was saying this in September. I remember saying it when the Titan Steelers NFL game was canceled. I remember saying, I'm just going to be honest. I don't claim to know as much about the NFL as I do college football, college basketball, the college athletics community, but what I can tell you definitively is this. The NFL has been testing every day since August, and if the NFL is doing daily testing and they're still getting positives and they're still having to postpone games, that's probably not a good sign for the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Well, sure enough, the Big Ten thinks, well, we're going to have daily testing. It's not going to be an issue, and it's been an issue literally since week one. Wisconsin plays a game. Next day, bunch of positives. Have to shut down for two weeks. It happened at Maryland. It happened at uh, Ohio State now. I think there's one or two. Minnesota had to cancel or postpone a game this weekend. Uh, And it certainly happened in the Pac-12 where I don't know that anybody has gotten in all the games that are scheduled so far. Maybe Oregon, but really outside of two or three teams, uh, there's a lot of teams that have had games canceled or postponed. Not postponed, canceled because of the situation. So you look at the situation, the Big Ten has done everything wrong, and now we are at the breaking point. 
because Ohio State is at a position where they have only four games so far. They have a maximum of six going into championship weekend. And again, if one of the next two games gets canceled, they will not qualify for the Big Ten championship game. And so what that does is create complete chaos for the remainder of the season from the Big Ten's perspective. First of all, imagine a world where a team is the best team in the league, clearly, is just not eligible to play in their conference championship game. That's a big moneymaker. It matters for the conference. Oh, by the way, Northwestern, Indiana, that's your Big Ten championship game because Ohio State did not qualify because of this stupid rule that you put into place. So that's one. We're going to have a tainted championship where, I'll be honest, if you're Indiana, if you're Northwestern, I don't know if you're excited to play in that game, and I know you're certainly not excited to call yourself Big Ten champion when you know the best team in this conference didn't even play in this game because of some dumb rule. But now, I think it opens up a whole huge can of worms when it comes to the college football playoff. Because when you look at Ohio State, they fought so hard for this season, and now, what is their resume going to be? They're down, they're, they have only played four games, at most, they're going to play seven if they play the next two plus the conference championship game. But if they don't get in the conference championship game, think about a lot of different things. First of all, they wouldn't be the conference champion. The Big Ten did, by the way, get bailed out by Northwestern losing to Michigan State because now we don't have to argue about undefeated Northwestern versus undefeated Ohio State that couldn't play them in the Big Ten conference championship game. But I mean, think about Ohio State's resume the way it's currently constructed. Their best win is against Indiana, which, shout out to Indiana, we talked about them on last Monday's show, but it's not as though, uh, you know, they're going to be writing oral histories about Ohio State's victory over Indiana back in 2020. Penn State stinks, that win doesn't really matter. Michigan stinks, that eventual win isn't going to matter. Um, and yes, they will, in theory, if they don't qualify for the Big Ten Championship game, play Wisconsin, but I mean, is a six or seven game resume five, six, seven game resume with the best win against Wisconsin, is that really a playoff caliber resume? Now, I'm not arguing that I don't think Ohio State's one of the four best teams. I think Ohio State's really good. I think they have issues, the secondary, they have some problems. But I think when you look at this team, I don't think you can, if you want to argue they're one of the four best teams, I'm not going to fight you. But if they don't get in these games, they're not going to qualify for the conference championship game, which means they won't be a conference champion. And we're talking about a 6-7-0 or seven and team at best that missed a bunch of weeks, and you're going to be comparing their resume with teams that have, frankly, much more impressive resumes. Let me give you an example. If Clemson beats Notre Dame in the ACC championship game, both of those teams would be 10-1. and one. They would have a win against each other. And I don't think there's any debate that those two teams are in. But let me take it a step further. What about if Florida beats Alabama in the SEC championship game? Now, I don't think it's going to happen, but what if it does? Now you're talking about a Florida team that's 10-1, and one, has essentially played twice as many games as Ohio State, and is a conference champion. You know they're getting in, and you can't tell me Bama's not getting in because look at Bama. At that point, they'd be 10-1, and one, dominant, win over Texas A&M, win over Georgia, better than anything that Ohio State has done. And I'm not saying it's fair to Ohio State, but what I'm saying is that committee will have a really tough decision. How do you penalize Alabama that's done everything right, that's gotten in all of their games, and finished 10-1 and with a loss to Florida? I'll take it even a step beyond that. What do you do with Texas A&M versus Ohio State? If Texas A&M finishes 9-1, and their only loss is to Alabama, I'm not saying that I think Texas A&M is a better team, but you can't tell me Texas A&M at 9-1 and one with their only loss at Alabama, a win over Florida, is not a more impressive resume than what Ohio State will be at 6-0, and 7-0 without a conference championship. And so listen, I'm not going to sit here and fight you over, oh, Ohio State versus Texas A&M, Florida versus Ohio State. All I'm telling you is this was a colossal failure from the league to their teams, and it has created so much chaos that is completely unnecessary. And you know who I feel worse for? I feel worse for the people that have fought so hard to get this season in. I feel bad for the players. I feel bad for the parents. I feel bad for the fans. I feel bad for everybody that fought to get this season in because this league has failed their players, their parents, their coaches, their alumni. 
They have failed them one after the other, after the other, after the other. And it was completely unnecessary and it was completely avoidable. And yet here we are. What a disaster from the Big Ten. And I feel bad for Ohio State. And I hope they get the games in needed to qualify for the Big Ten championship game.